on designing an informal learning uh, support framework. Okay. Uh, so, some uh, very brief uh, state of the art. Uh, so, in, in the European Union, uh, there has been a lot of uh, talk uh, and interest in recognizing uh, informal learning, and uh, everything was more or less formalized uh, with uh, the Bologna Treaty in 1999, and since then, uh, we have a lot of initiatives within the European Union uh, trying to support and uh, provide uh, some uh, framework for uh, informal learning. So we have uh, CENTERFOP, which is a center for the development of uh, vocational uh, training. Uh, we have uh, there is the European Qualification Framework that provides uh, like a, a framework for uh, all the, the European countries uh, to Qualify, to qualify and quantify their uh, uh, the informal learning uh, in in a common framework. Uh, there is a, there was a lifelong learning program that supported a number of uh, European projects and also the inventory project. Uh, in 2009, uh, Hope published a very comprehensive uh, guideline on validating uh, non-formal and uh, informal learning, uh, which is a pretty interesting read and it's supposed to provide a common uh, starting point for all European countries. Uh, so, uh, going to our proposal, uh, we want to design uh, a framework uh, for uh, gathering the informal learning activities uh, of, uh, of users, of learners, uh, provide uh, support for their evaluation and also uh, having support for showcasing these uh, activities uh, inside an informal uh, learning portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, lessons learned. Uh, we have actively uh, participated uh, in uh, the trailer project, which was part of uh, the lifelong learning program of the European Union. And uh, we, there we got some uh, pretty interesting insight uh, on how uh, a portfolio of informal learning uh, should, should and should not uh, work. So. Uh, Learners uh, often underestimate their informal learning activity. So we found out uh, um, talking to the, the users of uh, the platform we developed that actually uh, before uh, being introduced to the platform they were not uh, very uh, um, conscious of the, of the amount of informal learning activity they were undertaking every day. Uh, which is a very interesting uh, thing to keep in mind that uh, it's, it is important to help uh, learners understand that actually informal learning is not something that they are actively doing uh, almost all the, all the time. Uh, also, uh, users of, of any type of uh, product uh, hate overhead. So, uh, an approach that uh, will uh, have them <coughs> spend uh, even, even a little time every day on top of their work, uh, managing a portfolio um, could be a lot to us, to someone. So uh, the best thing will be to maybe to provide a way to please, uh, to provide a way to keep uh, the, the the whole process uh, non intrusive and uh, um, as entertaining as it can be. Uh, also, using uh, official competence lists uh, that are provided by organis uh, organizations uh, and uh, countries and the European community, uh, these lists tend to be overcomplicated and uh, not very usable. Uh, 
So you end up having um, thousands of options and uh, sifting through these options is not uh, uh, very, um, very handy. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, people like to interact with other people and uh, discover, uh, discover activities that they didn't know about uh, and discover ways to learn, uh, sources, everything. Uh, so our proposal is uh, to provide a platform uh, for showcasing and promoting informal learning uh, where uh, social interaction is the key component and it's what drives the evaluation uh, and the recommendation uh, procedures within this platform. Mm. Uh, so, uh, the concept of the framework, this is a very high level uh, concept is that you have your informal learning sources, which can be uh, either um, the sources themselves, like web services, uh, video services like YouTube, <coughs> uh, social networks, uh, forums, uh, chat rooms. Uh, so all the places where informal learning comes from uh, daily, or also uh, activities defined by the learner uh, themselves. So. This, this helps us uh, actually uh, add activities that are uh, not found uh, online. Uh, and then have all those activities fed into an informal learning portfolio uh, with uh, the, both the learners and maybe some supervisors uh, having, uh, having access uh, to this portfolio. And from this portfolio uh, comes out what we call uh, the informal learning objects. I will explain, I think it's in the next slide, what, uh, what we define as an informal learning object. Uh, so, uh, but the purpose of it is not to produce informal learning objects, it's just in the possible uh, outcome that you can take out of it. So, uh, what we define as an informal learning object, the term um, is not defined by any means, but uh, it's a place for the for their name uh, at this point. Uh, is uh, with the informal learning activity uh, enriched uh, with uh, extra details that uh, are used to further describe uh, the activity itself. So you can have some tags to categorize it, uh, you, have, you can have a set of uh, evidences that support this activity that uh, um, uh, really uh, prove that you have undertaken it and you have learned something, and uh, also uh, an optional uh, quality rating, uh, so that you can have the, the evaluation there inside the platform. So uh, the entire object that uh, is formed from all these uh, additional details to the activity, we call it the informal learning object. Uh, so uh, the components of the FAIR framework we are uh, we are proposing and we are uh, designing uh, is a, a learning record store, which is a, dat a database of uh, the learning activities or the learning objects. Uh, and then we have a social interaction component, a recommendation engine, and uh, some evaluation uh, algorithms uh, for evaluating the activities. I'll go into detail uh, right now about all of these uh, items. Uh, so, uh, here there is a, a schematic of the interaction uh, of uh, the components. Uh, so, you have the informal learning activities here, uh, and which are communicated into the record store. Um, we use uh, the experience API to, to communicate the activities. The experience API is uh, uh, just a way of saying uh, uh, of conveying and uh, uh, I did uh, something. Uh, so I, I did an activity and you convey it to the learning record store and uh, from here we feed the uh, social tag, the, the tagging mechanism and uh, some direct evaluation which all feed into creating the semantic model of the activity which is uh, the, the object which is uh, retroactively fed back to the learning record store 
Uh, the semantic model is also built uh, using some competencies. I will get into more detail later. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, then from the semantic model and also the evaluation, uh, we feed the recommendation, uh, the recommendation engine. And then obviously on top of that, we need to have a user interface. Uh, and um, <coughs> at, any, at any point in time, um, the, the whole framework will be able to uh, export uh, informal learning objects um, to uh, where necessary. Uh, so let's talk about the individual components just a little bit more. Uh, the learning record store uh, is a database of learning activities. Uh, as I saw earlier, we use the experience API, which is, was formerly known as TeamCAN API, uh, just in case I'm not it has uh, and it is used to communicate the activities inside and outside uh, from the framework. And I, we are building our first prototype uh, using the ADL Learning Record Store, which is uh, open source and available uh, here at this uh, address. Uh, the social interaction component. Uh, so, uh, our idea is that learners uh, will be able to rate the activities of their peers. So, uh, a main driver of the evaluation within the platform will be done by, by learners. We are trying uh, to not involve uh, necessarily external uh, evaluators. Uh, so, uh, this evaluation can be done either directly by rating an activity that they find uh, on a platform or that they, they themselves undertake, or indirectly uh, by adapting an activity. So, you see that one of your peers has undertaken this informal learning activity, you like it, you, uh, you undertake the same activity, this activity will be evaluated uh, positively due to your adoption. Uh, and also there, there will be mechanisms for learners to follow uh, the activities. Okay, so they, I will talk later, there will be a recommendation system, but there will be also a direct way to follow the activities of some person you find uh, has common interests. Uh, the recommendation engine uh, will be an engine that uh, will try to recommend uh, to analyze people's activity and then, uh, based on that, uh, try to recommend activities that they may not know about, that they may have missed. Uh, so, <clears throat> some of the metrics that we are uh, planning on using, at least for our first iteration, is uh, the, the interests of the, of the learner, uh, which will be based on the competencies and tags they use to uh, they adhere to their activities. Uh, their uh, informal learning uh, history, so past uh, activities uh, and uh, the, evaluate, the average evaluation of the activities they have undertaken, uh, the time investment, uh, the amount of time they used to spend uh, during uh, doing this uh, their informal learning, uh, <coughs> social interactions in the platform, and uh, also. Uh, if we can identify a general tendency uh, that's forming uh, among a, lot, uh, a big number of users, maybe the, it can be uh, promoted as uh, something interesting uh, that's happening now, and maybe uh, <coughs> you as a learner are interested to follow this trend, this learning trend. Uh, and <coughs> the, as far as the evaluation algorithm is concerned, mm, we have put in too much thought uh, in that. We are clearly in the design uh, process to have an, an, a clear picture. Uh, but <coughs> most probably it will be a combination of uh, self, uh, self and peer assessment and uh, also uh, the rating of uh, uh, the various uh, activities, uh, popularity and adoption rate of the, of the activities. Okay. So, well, unfortunately, I can't get into any more detail right now. We don't have any more to say. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I talked before that uh, one of the problems we 
we, we show in uh, our implication in the trailer project was that the, the competence list, uh, lists we used uh, at the platform uh, was extremely long, overly complicated with some very specific definitions which in some cases were more, la more than a line uh, long. So going through all those uh, competencies, just trying to find what best suits your, uh, your activity was not an option at least not a practical one. Uh, so we want to avoid uh, making the same mistake and uh, maybe uh, just start the platform with a very simple uh, competence list that could just uh, contain general uh, areas of competencies and then let users uh, provide uh, uh, definitions for their competencies. Uh, so more or less something maybe like uh, what LinkedIn does that helps you, that uh, lets you uh, define uh, uh, things you know. Uh, and uh, as, uh, as the users uh, use the platform and define uh, new competencies uh, and are presenting the, with, uh, as options with those that are already in the system introduced by other users, um, maybe we will get to a form of equilibrium that uh, will uh, just provide a coherent uh, competence list after some after a period of, uh, of use. So the current state uh, is that the initial uh, design phase for a first prototype is almost in, uh, concluded. Uh, it will be based, uh, the first prototype, uh, just uh, on YouTube. Yeah. This is uh, because it's uh, easy and provides a lot uh, of, uh, of information uh, right out of the box because uh, you, you can get uh, your liked lists, uh, feature lists, uh, there is a lot, uh, the uploads of a user, uh, watched videos and all that stuff, so there is a lot of information you can get just by providing a connector from YouTube uh, and obviously later iterations will be adding connectivity to, to other uh, learning platforms like blogs, uh, like uh, uh, Google searches, uh, Google Docs or just to name a few, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, so, uh, and the idea is, as we develop it, uh, to do, to try and do some uh, pilot phases, uh, maybe six months apart, and gather feedback uh, from users, have users uh, both from uh, uh, the uh, from universities and uh, companies, uh, try out the platform for a couple of weeks, and then gather user user statistics and uh, have them answer some questionnaires trying to get their opinions and iterate uh, the platform based uh, on, uh, on these opinions. So that's all, thank you very much.